Hello again, art historians. Today is a quick video. Today is a video about mannerism, and we only have a couple of pieces to think about when we do mannerism, but mannerism is wild and wacky fun. So I'm just gonna tell you that we're gonna do some stuff that's a little bit strange and a little bit odd, um, because that's what mannerism is. It's a, <laughs> it's a little bit strange. All right, so let's talk about the characteristics of mannerism. Um, it's easiest to think about when you're thinking about in terms of fashion. Um, with art, you know, you say everybody has their own unique style, you have your sense of flair, you have your, you know, your own thing that represents you. Um, and mannerism is like a style of art. Um, and what we're talking about, it means that, you know, she's got style. There's something that only a few people have. And mannerism means this idea that, that it is a, a way of looking at stuff. Um, Renaissance was very, everything was perfect. People looked beautiful. The backgrounds were stunning. Um, in art, mannerism is less concerned with things looking real and becomes more concerned with this sort of unnameable sort of feeling of style. It, it it goes against convention. I mean, the whole thing is innovative. Um, it goes against what we're um, used to seeing. Um, it, it It is, um, they are often complex. There's a lot going on, but there's also often a, a sense of ambiguity, ambiguity, things that don't quite seem clear. Um, the forms are exaggerated. And what do I mean by that? The body shapes and the body um, positions seem um, exaggerated, even artificial. Um, it's, it's, and the composition of most mannerist pieces is the thing that is the oddest in that we're looking, when we were looking at um, Renaissance, we were very much looking at pyramidal structure now we're looking at um, mannerism, mannerism, and it, it's a, a very circular um, composition. Uh, and the colors are very strange. Uh, the colors are not what we are used to. Um, so let's dive in, and we'll look. <laughs> we'll look at our first piece of mannerist art. So this piece is called The Entombment of Christ. Um, and The Entombment of Christ is the, the, that piece where um, it's, it's similar to the lamentation. Uh, Christ has been taken down off the cross. And um, he is being taken to uh, the tomb where he will, his body will be prepared for, for burial. Okay. So we see here with... Um, uh, with Jacopo Pontormo, that's how you say that, Jacopo Pontormo. Um, we see with Pontormo here uh, that this is um, uh, located uh, in a chapel designed by Brunelleschi um, in Florence, as most of Brunelleschi's stuff is. Um, the chapel itself is a Renaissance chapel, but then um, the, the chapel con um, commissioned Pontormo to do a couple of... Um, uh, of mannerist paintings. Um, and what we see here is um, the entombment, also called the deposition, sometimes called the lamentation, Christ being taken off the cross. Notice that we don't see a lot of the figures that we're used to seeing in this moment, okay? Often when we see the lamentation, the cross is in the background. It's not there. Often when we're doing the entombment, um, we see the tomb in the background that they're going to take him to, not there. When we see Christ's body in this position, we see the cross and usually a ladder to show him being taken down, not there. It's a lot of really wild stuff that's, that's going on in this piece, okay? And so with that, then we start really looking at what's going on here. We do not have a pyramidal composition, this composition is circular. Your eye sort of comes in towards the center here. You grab 
Christ here and you come around and you go around this way, up the back of this person, up the head of Mary, across the back of this person and back down around. Okay. These figures do not seem to be anchored. These figures are floating. We do not really see a ground line. Some of these figures are, they seem to have almost no weight to them. Um, some of the figures are in positions that don't seem quite possible. This figure in the front here that has Christ on his shoulder, we, we don't quite see how um, he could be in that position. Um, the body seemed to be twisted. Um, the, the Some of the figures seem androgynous. We're not sure male or female. We're the, Some people have their backs to us. Um, the, the colors are strange. Um, I want you to think about this piece, and I want you then to think about the lamentation that we saw in the arena chapel and, and compare the two. Yes, there is a use of blue, but there's this odd orange in here and all of these pinks and some weird greens in the background. This lady doesn't even seem real. Like that lady seems straight up to be like floating in the air. And we're not really sure why that is. Um, we're not really sure what's happening here. We're, um, there's a lot going on and, and it's, um, it's difficult to really put together what exactly we're looking at. Um, and, and that is indicative of, as I said, that's indicative of this whole, um, this whole time period, this whole thing is this idea that, um, that everything just seems strange. Um, uh, give me one second, please. I'm just trying to, um, I'm pulling it up on the other computer to see if I can figure out why I can't get it to zoom in on this figure, but I can't. Uh, sorry about that. So um, it's just when, when we talk about um, mannerism, we're going to talk about odd body shapes. We're going to talk about odd colors. We're going to talk about um, things being elongated and stretched. Let's go to the next page. Okay, we see this lady up in the corner. Look at how long her neck is and how she seems in this unnatural position. Look at um, Mary's neck, seems very long. The body of Christ seems unnaturally long. And we're not used to seeing, look at this teeny tiny line that is the, the mark of the spear he was stabbed with. And this teeny tiny line that is um, the, the nails from the crucifix, it, it, the body shapes just are, um, they're odd. Um, and the word we use is highly stylized. They are not meant to look exact. They are meant to look long and, um, stylized. They are meant to, um, grab your attention. Uh, you can even look in here and see sort of some examples that look a little bit like Posse Chapel. It's not. Um, but look at the Renaissance Chapel and then this wild mannerist painting inside of it. It makes it stand out and it, um, is, it becomes much clearer. But notice that things are not proportional. The bodies don't seem to be in proportion. The, the shapes of the bodies don't seem to be uh, correct. The, there's just a lot of things that just don't seem to be right. Um, and that is, you know, that is mannerism. Mannerism is about getting across a specific feel and not about um, getting across um, specific uh, realism. This is the most famous mannerist painting of all time. Uh, this is called the Madonna of the Long Neck. Um, uh, and it is because, again, look how out of proportion she seems. She just doesn't seem to be um, humanly proportioned. Um, and and so uh, this is not one of your images, but this is a really great example of, of uh, uh, mannerism. Here's another really good example of mannerism, El Greco. Uh, look at the colors, okay? It's just, mannerism is about a feel. Um, and so uh, that's what you're looking at. So this is your image, the entombment of Christ, okay? These are some others that might help you sort of see that mannerism. It's just odd and disproportionate, okay? All right, then this is the church that fits into the mannerist period, okay? 
there's a lot going on here. And um, I wasn't sure where to put this. So I'm going to put it in mannerism, but we're going to um, talk about the inside being not quite mannerist. So name of the church is Ilyezu. Okay. Um, and inside the church, it includes a fresco called Triumph in the Name of Jesus. So it's a mannerist church, and there's a little bit of Baroque in it. It's okay. Don't worry about that. We're going to do Baroque. That's our next unit. Okay. And you have some architects. The architect for the whole church is Giacomo di Vignola. The architect for this front of the building is Giacomo della Porta. And then the interior designs are by Gaudi. You don't need to know Giovanni, Batita, Gaudi. Just Gaudi is enough. So the church is from the 1500s. Um, the early 1500s. The facade built 1568 to 1584, that front area. The inside, though, the, the pictures, 1676 to 1679, much later. Okay. So you're going to get a couple of churches that are going to look similar. All right. And so I'm going to try to give you a little hint here. So this is Il Yezu, which means Jesus, right? It's the Church of Christ, Jesus. And if you'll remember that Il Yezu, Jesus is considered part of the Trinity, right? Or if you think about that, when Jesus was crucified, he was crucified on a hill with two other criminals crucified next to him. Then you will hopefully remember that Il Yezu, the church of Jesus, is the one that has three front doors. Okay. Uh, that's how I can help you with this. Um, there, you will have another church that will look very similar to that. I will give you a different way to remember this one, but Il Yezu, meaning Jesus of the Trinity, three doors. Okay, there you go. So when we look at the front, we're going to talk about the things about the front that are really, really mannerist. One of the things that we're going to talk about is look at all these wackadoodle curvy lines. Look at this crazy thing that comes down here and swirls around. This crazy thing that comes down here and swirls around. Look at all this decoration over the door. We got a pediment over this window. We got this big sculpture here. It's very like oddly proportioned. Okay. Um, it, it does have this sort of unifying line here that connects the top to the bottom, but it all just feels a little bit odd. Okay. Um, and, and that's really what, what you're looking at here is it is in that odd sort of flowing stylistic kind of construction. And even when you go inside, Okay, you're going to see sort of some of these odd lines and things like that. Okay, um, and we're going to talk about the fact that the inside of the church rides a gap between mannerism and Baroque. Don't worry about that. You'll understand Baroque more once I start teaching it to you. But just think about that some of the stuff in here um, feels oddly proportioned. Um, some stuff feels like it's in the weird place. Some stuff feels like this arch with these columns just does, feels like it's out of, it, proportion is the right word. It just feels out of proportion. Um, and so when we come in and we looked at the inside, we do see though that it is your standard basilica setup. I mean, it's just your standard based on Roman basilica setup. Now, you only have three images. You have your front image, the inside, and then this ceiling. And this ceiling is crazy. Um, this ceiling is, it's, uh, it's sort of 3D. There, we have some things that are attached to the roof that are painted on wood that are then painted onto the ceiling too, which is why it looks like the, the painting comes out of sort of this oval shape in the center and onto the rest of the ceiling um, because it does. The, he stretched the, 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 the art off to the side. Um, uh, we see in the center here IHS, which is the, the monogram for Christ. Um, that is also present on the front of the church. So let me just show you. It's present here, IHS, and it's present here, IHS. And so if you can remember that, then you'll remember that this church, this picture is in that church. Um, and we see lots of use of shadow and light. We see all of that charoscuro, that different shades of light and dark for emphasis. So what is the name of this? So this 
this particular painting on the ceiling is called Triumph in the Name of Jesus. So this is like the idea of Jesus going up into heaven. And some of the, as I said, some of the figures are um, carved into um, wood and, and over the edge of the, the, the little oval there in order to give it sort of a three-dimensional look. Um, this is a last judgment scene. Okay, so we have a last judgment scene at the Tympanum in Saint Foy. We have a last judgment scene in um, the um, the Sistine Chapel. Uh, we have last judgment scenes all over the place because really the idea of like the the end of days and and Christ as um, Christ in majesty as the 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 one who decides, you know, your your fate. Uh, Christ, the the eternal judge, it, it becomes a p. It becomes an image that shows up a lot in art, um, and so when we look at this, we see sort of you know that idea of of um, Christ going up into in being up in heaven and bringing the 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 people who are saved up with him. Um, it and it has that idea of the mannerism and that its borders don't quite seem clear and its colors are a little bit odd and it feels very kind of dramatic and strange. And so it is um, a, a, a really good representation of the colors and sort of the ambiguity and the oddness of mannerism. Um, I'm going to teach you in the next video about Baroque, and I'm going to want you to go back and look at this piece, and we'll look at it again through the Baroque lens, but for, through the Mannerist lens, um, it does have that odd color. It does have a round composition. I mean, it's clearly a round composition, um, and it does have sort of that ambiguity and strangeness that goes with um, Mannerism. Okay, so mannerism is really about the odd colors and the odd compositions, um, things being sort of out of proportion, um, and um, it just sort of just feeling a little odd. Okay, so that's that's it. That's mannerism. Just those two, um, and and then we move into baroque. So that was an easy video. No problems with that one. It went super fast, and I'll see you next time for baroque.